Hi everyone, this is Ashwin here. In this video, we are going to solve the problem Zor sequence. An array A is defined as follows A of 0 equals 0, A of x equals A of x minus 1, x or x. So here uh, x is the index that is uh, greater than 0, and this is uh, x or uh, symbol. So we have to do a Zor operation with the previous result and the current index. That's how we can able to generate uh, this sequence. You will be given a left and right index L, R. You must determine the XOR sum of the segment A as A of L, XOR, A of L plus 1, that is up to A of R. So we have to find this uh, XOR sum, that is our objective. So here, for example, A equals 0, 1, 3, 0, 4. Like this, the sequence will go on further. And uh, here the segment from L is 1 to R is 4. So we have first index that is 1 until this uh, 4 number. So 1, 3, 0, 4. If you take the X or sum means the result is 6. So this is the straightforward approach. So this thing we can able to generate uh, using this uh, formula and we can able to generate up to uh, some maximum number but that will also take some time and after that we have to do a ZOR operation for multiple times for uh, L and R that also uh, will in turn uh, mix multiple uh, runs so this will definitely exceed the time limit so we have to observe some pattern and uh, easily solve this problem so that is our objective let's also see the constraints so here we have uh, queries equals uh, 10 to the power of 5 and uh, we have L and R in the range of uh, 10 power 15. So obviously the range is uh, way more higher than we are expected. So we definitely have to go for some optimal approach or else we can't able to solve this problem. So here for the sample input uh, we have three queries and this is the L and R. So for this uh, if you get into this uh, values and after that uh, if you do a XOR operation for the range you will be getting these results so they have mentioned uh, this range so they have mentioned up to 11 and uh, they are using all the XOR uh, operations and uh, getting the results and printing it and here also we have uh, same three uh, queries and uh, we have different ranges so as you can able to see it's going further up and we have to generate all these things if you are uh, doing in a standard way. So the first thing I have done is observing uh, some pattern. Usually in bit manipulation there will be always a pattern as you can able to see in the previous videos. If you didn't see just check on that. So what I am going to do is I am going to uh, pick some of the values and observe some sequence. So while doing it, I can uh, able to observe some eight values. I'm going to get first eight values from this array that is generated. So we can't able to generate all these things. That's why I'm doing this. So 0, 1, 3, 0, 4, 1, 7, and 0. So these eight numbers having a repeated pattern. So we have to do some XOR operations, right? So for that, I'm going to do a XOR operation here. So after doing the XOR operation for over uh, 16 values, I can able to observe these values are getting repeated again and again. So first, initially it will be zero. So zero XOR one is uh, one, one XOR three is two, two XOR zero is two, two XOR four is six, six XOR one is seven, 7xr7 seven is 0, 0xr0 zero zero is 0. So these 8 values are repeating again and again. So that's how I can able to get some pattern. So if you take some modulus operation for some number, let's say the range, and you can able to easily get the x or sum of that particular range. So that's how I found the logic for this problem. Now we have to define a function so def function i'll take a number here so now uh, we are going to uh, modulus by 8 so that is the number so n equals number modulus 8 
because these eight values only is repeated again and again. You can also take more values from here and uh, do a XOR operation and you can able to find a similar values over there also. So after this, after doing the modulus, we'll be having uh, some numbers. So here you can able to observe some pattern. So zero, one. This is uh, same as the modulus number. So we can able to display as it is. So if n equals zero or n equals one, then return the number because it is uh, same as it is. And uh, here for the next two numbers, we have to return two. So LF n equals two or n equals three, we have to return two because both the numbers are same. And after that, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. 4 and 5, we have to increment by 2 and return it. So 4 plus 2 is 6 and uh, 5 plus 2 is 7. Now here, LF n equals 4 or n equals 5, we'll be returning number plus 2. And the last 6 and 7, we have to return zero. So we will be returning zero. So these are done. Now for the main logic. So what I'm going to do is uh, here you can able to see um, for this case uh, we have the range of two to four. So we are getting from the index two, three and four. Both are inclusive. So uh, light like taking a difference, I'm going to do like this, return fun of R XR fun of L minus one. I'm just taking the whole XOR sum and uh, do an, and doing a XR operation by the previous uh, sum, like the total range. If you let's consider without leaving the XOR operation, if you take a total sum of these particular values, like let's say uh, if you are having a total range of values and uh, you are having some kind of prefix sum. So if you are having that, uh, you usually uh, take a difference between uh, the maximum range minus the minimum range. That's how you are going to do it, right? So similarly, we are using the same thing. This is the maximum range that is uh, R and this is the minimum range. So because of L is inclusive, so I'm just using uh, minus one to get the previous values or sum and uh, this will return our answer and again uh, here also I have done various operations before that I have used uh, a normal um, negation itself and uh, or and after that only I used uh, ZOR so you have to use some kind of a trial and error method uh, based on the patterns I don't know whether you can able to figure out uh, in the first try definitely I didn't uh, figure this out in the first try because bit manipulation it's kind of a tricky it's not like a complex but it's tricky so you have to do some trial and error method in order to find the logic let's run the code to check whether our solution is right or not so as you can able to see it's passed the sample test case let's submit it and we have successfully solved the problem so here uh, for this more complex problem, like for the time limit exceeded problem, we have uh, done it in a simpler approach. So we have defined some functions with the help of uh, this pattern. I actually have to uh, use more numbers and uh, show you the pattern. You can uh, do it by yourself, but uh, these pattern will be uh, repeating again. That's why we are uh, confidently using this modulus eight operation. And also if you go in a straightforward approach means you have to generate all these things and uh, you again have to go through the range of elements to find the X or some. That's why it's taking uh, so much longer time. Even if you use some kind of dynamic programming, it will take way more uh, longer time. Maybe even if you generate uh, this kind of pattern previously and uh, go through all the ranges means it will definitely uh, 
time out for one or two test cases i didn't try out but it may time out so try to uh, minimize your uh, solution as simple as possible uh, that's how uh, you can able to easily solve the bit manipulation and that's it guys i'll see you in the next video